Let's keep going forward with our least squares regression and our linear correlation. This relates exactly with 4.1, all right? So chapter four really is cohesive. And so we're building on what we already know. We're just taking it to that next level. So we did linear, um, those correlation coefficients with that linear, core, um, linear regression. And we're going to keep up with that least squares regression line. Now here's where we put the word regression in there, which is helpful whenever we're looking at stat crunch, right? Because that's where we're going here with the regression part of it. But we've got some things to talk about here before we get right into stat crunch. So a least squares regression line has this symbol. You know we're big on our symbols, right? So if you have this Y hat is what it's called. So when you have something like this, this is y hat, that is the prediction. That's what a least squares regression line does, is the line that minimizes the sum of the squared errors or residuals. We'll talk about that here too. So the sum of the squared errors or my residuals, it minimizes that and it gets it as accurate to the data as possible. So the equation is just slope-intercept form. But the key to this is the fact that it says y hat. So y hat, this is a prediction. Because just like we saw before is how tight is that data, right? That correlation coefficient. How spread out is that data? Is it positive? Is it negative? So anytime you see y hat, they're saying, based on the data I'm given, I can use this line to make a prediction. So putting that little hat on there for that Y hat makes a difference, right? And then the same thing that's happening like it does in any other line, this A represents my slope, and then the B actually represents the Y intercept, which is the B that we already know, right? This is just our Y equals MX plus B because it's a line. Looking at the slope, and the y-intercept, right? And your y-intercept is that point um, zero and then some number, right, of whatever it is that we're looking at. And your slope are the y's over the x's, that change in y over the change in x. I'm gonna put a little delta in front of it, it looks like a triangle, because that means change. So the change in y over the change in x. This is important. Because in statistics, not only is the expectation that you can do the calculations, but you need to be able to interpret. That's really the goal here. Anything that we do, we want to say, oh, okay, that's cool. Let me look at this information. And then we interpret it. All right. So you need to know what a slope and a y-intercept is because it's an interpretation. This is intended to be close, but not 100% accurate. The big deal whenever it is slope, it's going to be the y's over the x's. And in particular, when I'm looking at my y, is my output, right? And the output over the input. That's a slope, y's over the x's. And we know our output to also be the what? Response. Good. That's the response over the explanatory. You can barely see that. That's the response. Let me put it in a different place because that looks terrible. So if I'm looking at this output over input, it's the response over the explanatory, which is the same thing as the output over the input, right? Okay, that's what we want to look at here. The Y's over the X's, the output over the input, response over explanatory. So whatever it is it's talking about, that's what you're looking for, all right? And the other big thing that comes with slope that we're looking at here is that I always want with my slope, I want it to be a decimal number typically over one. So it's going to be some decimal, and this number is going to be a decimal. i got a whole lot written in this small space, don't I? It's going to be some decimal number that's over 1, and that's how I can look at what a slope is. Okay, and again, it is a prediction. So we're looking at a prediction based on the data. All right? Okay, so let's look at the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we know that it is the coordinate point 
zero with some number. So the number that we're looking at is that explanatory number, right? Oh, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. This is the response. And then this is the explanatory. Explanatory, right? And it really small in there. So if zero is my explanatory variable, does that make sense? That's really what we're asking here. Does it make sense? Is zero a reasonable value for the explanatory variable, for that input value? Does it make sense? Sometimes it doesn't. Like in this particular instance, would it make sense to have a club head speed of zero? No. Well, you're not moving it at all? That doesn't make any sense, right? So that doesn't necessarily make sense. It could be outside of the scope of the model. Do any observations near x equals zero even exist in the data set, right? So when you interpret these, because you're going to be asked to interpret this, when you interpret these, you got to figure out, go back old school basic algebra, right? This linear basic algebra that you're looking at. And you say, okay, does it make sense to have a y-intercept? What does my slope make sense? Instead of using y's and x's, we're just using response and explanatory. But it's talking about the same concept, right? It could totally be outside of the scope because we're talking about real world situations, not just putting it on a grid. All right, so I'm gonna scoot this up. We are going to find a least squares regression line using technology, and we're going to use StatCrunch because we already have it, right? You go to the exact same place in StatCrunch that you went for correlation coefficient. So I'm gonna scoot this out of the way. Now I figured out a way to make our numbers bigger, so hopefully that works out great. So we're gonna click on stat, same thing, and then what do we go to? Regression, and there's the words regression are actually in our problem now. Then simple linear, good. And then the same thing, we're gonna go with variable one, variable two, and then there's nothing else that we're gonna be looking at there, so we click compute. And when we click compute, we had our correlation coefficient. We already figured that out from last time, right? This time, we're going to look at the y-intercept and the slope that is given to us. The y-intercept and the slope. Up here, var2 is the same thing as the output or the y. So this is y equals, and then they're using the y-intercept first. And then this is my slope and then my input, right, is going to be that um, x that we have. So if you know where the intercept is and the slope, we have these two values, that's what we're going to write in our equation. I'm gonna scoot this over so you can see it, hopefully as close as possible. And again, this is a regression line, so this is y hat. y hat equals, and I'm gonna put my slope first here, so I'm going to have, oh, I don't know, let's go to, what, like four decimal places just so we can make it nice and tight. 3.1661, 3.1661x. Now this is a negative intercept, so I'm going to put minus 55.7966. This again is my slope. And this is my y-intercept. Now, let's talk for a second. We just talked about, so do you see you're going in the exact same place? Yeah. So it's nice because everything, you're going to the same place in order to get all the information. Um, here, let's talk about what this means. So we have a slope and a y-intercept. If I have these values, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. I'm going to select this and and resize it so I can not be quite so big and in my business and scoot it over. So if we have our slope or the A in our formula, right, which is the same thing. Well, let me scoot this down so you can see. This A is my slope. The B is still the y-intercept. So I'm just going to write M for slope just because that's our nice algebra that we know how to do. So M is equal to 3.1661 over 1. 
right? So it's just over that one. This is because I have my input, which is my miles per hour over the distance, yards, right? Oh, 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 good job, good job. You're right and I'm wrong, right? You're right and I'm wrong. This is miles per hour. Oh my gosh, I did the same thing. What's wrong with me? This is yards over miles per hour. So it's my yards per the miles per hour because it's the Y's over the X's. It's the response over the explanatory, right? Okay, let me scoot this in so you can see a little bit better. Response over the explanatory. So this tells me my the ball, whenever I hit this ball, this golf ball, it's going to travel 3.1661 yards for every one mile per hour. That's what it tells me. So when I interpret that, it's a positive interpretation because my slope is positive. So it's gonna go a positive three yards for every mile per hour that I'm swinging the club, the club head speed. So do you see how this interpretation happens? And then also I can have my y-intercept, which is the b, which would end up being zero, negative 55, oops, negative 55 point, I'm just gonna write eight because I don't wanna write all that. So then talk about what this stands for. This is my miles per hour, and then these are yards. If I'm swinging the club head at zero miles per hour, the ball's gonna miraculously go negative 55 yards? No. Do you see what's happening up here whenever they say there's a possibility to be outside the scope of the model? This is a perfect uh, example of what that is. Zero miles per hour, first of all, doesn't make any sense. I'm not moving my club at all to hit the ball. And then for the ball to go negative yards, no. That's what makes this a prediction and not exactly what's always going to happen, right? So look at what's going on. I'm going to make this bigger so we can see it. Here is my least squares line. This is a line that has a slope of 3.1661. And if I were to extend this, notice that this is not going to zero, but if I were to extend these all the way down here, like way over here, and I'm looking at uh, my um, intercept, it'd actually be something more like this, because this would go down here to the negative value for my y-intercept. Do you see what's going on there? Okay, so pay attention to what, is set up in terms of your um, X and Y coordinates here. And so then you can see how this plays out. And then this is that setup. Cool, right? Okay, I just wanna make sure you understand what's going on. So it just says draw it on the diagram. There it is. You can see how the data relates to it and what's going on. Then we answer some questions. Notice it says predict. That's what my equation is for, is a prediction. So this is my predictive equation. Predict the distance a golf ball will travel when hit with a club head speed of 103 miles per hour. So let's predict that. I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit. So y hat here is 3.1661x minus 55.7966. This club head speed is my input value, right? So this is what is going to go into the X coordinate. So Y hat here is 3.1661 times 103 minus 55.7966. All right, so whenever I figure all that out, Y hat is now 270.3 three yards. And we're just going to take it to one decimal place. So I predict if I have a club head speed of 103 miles per hour based on the data that I currently have, then I predict that my 
um, distance will be 270.3 yards. All right? Okay, that's a prediction. Now, look at part D here. We want to determine the residual. The residual is how accurate am I with my prediction versus actual data. That's a residual. What is the observed, the actual data, minus what I predict, and then that is going to be my residual. So I'm saying how close am I with my prediction is basically what a residual is. So my observed data, lo and behold, let me put it up here, I have an observed data at 103. Ah, cool, right? So my actual value that I'm looking at is at 274 minus what I predict at 270.3. So my residual that I'm looking at is 3.7 yards. All right? So if my residual is positive, all right, if this is what's happening, is the actual above or below my predicted? And my predicted is also sometimes called the average of what we can expect. Yeah, the actual is above, right, because it's positive and the number's bigger. So because this is positive, so it is above average. The actual is above average. That's what I want to know. In the distance in table five, is the distance in table five, my actual distance above or below average among the balls hit with that same speed? I'm predicting the ball will only go 270.3 based on my data. It actually went 274, which is positive, making this positive. Therefore, it's above average. See all that? Play? So it's the verbiage that goes with it as you're working through these problems. Good. Keep practicing this. It'll come.